Hi there folks, Borislav247 here with another Days Gone video and this one is huge. It's all about the high ground glitches that exist within the Days Gone world and there are a lot of them. <laughs> so many in fact that at least one high ground glitch area can be used for every official horde in the game. So in this video I'm going to show the best high ground glitch area for every horde in this game. Now, I'll even take the time to show all the mission hordes and the two respawnable hordes that reside beside the ambush camps. Now, I basically want this video to be a go-to guide for anyone who struggles with the hordes in Days Gone, and to make life easier for everyone, I have this entire video chapter listed, so you can very quickly locate the horde that is giving you problems. Now, before I get to the action, it's important to know that these kill areas don't always take place during the day, so I do state on the top right of the screen if it's a day or night location. This is important to know, as if you head to one of the night kill areas during the day, the horde simply won't be there. And of course, the same applies if you go to the daytime kill location at night. I've also taken the time to show all the hordes in an order that you will most likely be taking them on as you progress through the Days Gone world. So, without any further ado, because there is a lot to get through. <laughs> Here they are, folks. Every single horde. Hope you enjoy. Right then, on to the Death Train horde. This is from the Cascade region, and this takes place during the daytime. That is where it's located on the map, and I have to show this one first, as this will be the first horde that you will ever likely see. Uh, ben Studio are very clever in making sure that the first few missions you will see this horde. And should you decide to take them on, this is a fantastically easy way of doing it. Now, it's basically this rock section here, and something else that I want to point out right at the very start of this video, it is worth knowing that I only use weapons that you're most likely to have when first taking on these hordes. So, if you have better weapons then, great, the job will be a much easier one for you. But if you don't, and you're taking these on at the very start, um, in this case, this is what you would normally have. The SAF-12, 9mm and a crossbow. So pretty much virtually all the hordes in the Cascade region I'm going to take out with this. And also worth knowing that if there are any throwables that I wouldn't have access to at this time, uh, especially the likes of Napalm Molotovs, I simply won't be using them. I'll only use them on hordes where basically I would have access to that weaponry. So something I just wanted to let you all know about uh, before the rest of this video progresses. Anyhow, I've got the horde all over here, um, or most of them, uh, because you will find as well with one or two of the hordes, you sometimes don't get every single freaker. Sometimes you do have to leave the position that you are at in order to get them all. The White King Mine Horde. 40 strong, reside in the Cascade region, and this horde will be taken out from their daytime location. Now, worth knowing that the area that I'm going to take them out in does not have a particularly high um, ground glitch area. <laughs> because not all of them have to be many feet in the air. This one is simply high enough to get the job done. And uh, the method in which to do this is a very simple one. I'm just basically going into the mine, just looking to get their attention with a bit of gunplay. Might as well try and take one or two of them out at the same time. But from here, I'm just basically running over this way and I'm heading towards the bridge section. Yeah, I'm just taking a quick look to make sure I've definitely got them coming. And from here, it's quite simply just look to jump over at that point, get up onto this rock section, and that's it. Uh, given the size of this horde, because they are only 40 strong, you are untouchable. They can't even get you with the World War Z stealth tactics here, so it is now just a nice clean up job.
the Proxy Falls Hoard. This hoard is 50 strong, reside in the Cascade region, and I will be taking them out from one of their nighttime locations. In fact, this will actually take place very close to their night feeding area. And this is the way I recommend you do it because they're all up to my right there. Just try and get past them very quickly with the bike. And from here, it's heading over that fallen uh, tree and getting to that point there as quickly as possible. Because once you're there and you'll know when you're at the right spot, basically any of the freakers in the surrounding area or from the horde itself will pass that tree in order to get down to the spot where, uh, where I'm about to take them out. And at this point, I always take the time to quite literally just... Uh, stand guard over this section just to make sure that none of them do actually try and get over that tree section because I have seen it happen once or twice in the past very rarely but it can happen so to make sure that uh, I don't get any surprise attacks I'm just waiting until the entire horde is basically over at this location and there we go I've pretty much got them so from here it's a nice easy job. Right on to the Little Bear Lake Horde. This horde is only 30 strong. It resides in the Cascade region and this is going to take place at night. And it's also worth knowing that this horde will not be available to take on until you have reached the Lost Lake region. That's very important to know. Now, here's the method. Basically looking to get up onto this rock section and do pay particular attention to the line that I take because it's actually quite a difficult rock to get onto. From here, I'm just going to take the time to come off, head back over to the bike, press the square button, make sure that I can get access to that bike again, which I can. And that's great. That's very important in basically making sure that once I have lured the horde up to this position, that I can get back on top of the rock. So the last thing that I have to do now is to just basically head down this way, get their attention and bring them back up to the kill area. Yeah, as you can see, the 9mm is absolutely freaking useless from that range, but it's all good. Um, I could have taken the time to take out a few more of them as they were heading up to my position, but it's not required. I'm just going to use a few shots from the, the 9mm just to make sure that they know exactly where I'm heading. And from here, just going to make sure to press the square button to get back up onto the bike. Uh, I'm using a PlayStation for this, uh, by the way, folks. That's why it's the square button. On the PC, it will be something else. And uh, basically from here, it should now be a fairly straightforward task. Yep, they're all on their way, so this shouldn't take long. Right then, on to the O'Leary Mountain Horde. This horde is only 25 strong. They reside in the Cascade region, and I'm going to take them out at the night water area. Now, here is the method. As always, make sure to watch the line that I'm taking when going up this rock, because if you do get it wrong, you will come off the bike. It is quite easy to get this one wrong. but. Once you're up onto this rock area, the job becomes uh, a fairly quick one given the size of this particular hole. Yeah. 
right then on to the horse lake horde this horde is 25 strong they reside in the cascade region and i'm going to be taking them out at night beside the night water location now the method for this one is a pretty easy one you don't have to worry too much about the line in getting up this set uh, rock area here you just have to make sure you approach the rock from this side now once i'm at the top I'm going to take the time to move over to this particular part of the rock area where the killing will become a very easy affair because they will gather nicely below me. And uh, yeah, it's worth noting I am actually going to take the time to use the SMP9 here because um, at this point in the game I would always have this weapon. And uh, for anyone who is not sure about how to get the SMP9 early, I do have a video that shows exactly how to get that job done because you only require four horde kills and given the way that I'm showing how to take them out right now it's not a difficult job on to the Cascade Highway Horde this horde is 50 strong they reside in the Cascade region and I'm basically looking to take them out beside their night feeding area now the method for this one is all about the setup and if you do it this way this is one of the easiest hordes you will ever have to face because you don't even require the bike this is actually all about just getting to a very specific location and this is the way that you need to go to get there uh, that's the horde right below me so i'm looking to get to that top area and then i'm looking head down to the bottom here just standing on one of the body bags as disrespectful as it is but from here, the board congregate very nicely below you, and the job becomes a very easy one. Right then, on to the last horde from the Cascade region, and it also happens to be the largest. This is the Grotto Caves horde. 75 strong. I'm looking to take them out from their night water location. And this horde um, only unlocks after you've got to the Lost Lake region. Now, I have heard rumours that it unlocks shortly before then, um, but as I don't know the exact time in which that happens or if it even does I always recommend you wait until you get to the Lost Lake region before looking for this horde because this horde is a really tough one to find at the best of times I'm taking them out at night but they can appear here during the day because they do like to roam but I'm looking to take them over to this area right here get the bike up onto this rock area no further than that come off the bike there is a nice wee ledge there that I can just uh, basically stand on and from here um, take out the horde and I would recommend that you use an SMP9 on this horde because although on this occasion here they're coming every time in small numbers if they do get to this location in large enough numbers you do have a possibility of one or two of them being able to get high enough where they can give you one or two slabs so in order to avoid that, just make sure that you're on point with uh, the firing, and you shouldn't have that issue. And, yep, there's one more to go, and, okay, this does sometimes happen. I did mention earlier on in the video that sometimes you will have to leave uh, the high ground location in order to take out the last of the Freakers, and this, this one is one of them. So, I'm just basically looking to head back over take out any freakers that are going about in this area here and hopefully should get the job done quite quickly there we go job done right then on to one of the first hordes you're likely to encounter in the Belknap region it is the lava arch horde 50 strong and I'm looking to take them out from their daytime location Now, 
the area that I'm actually going to be taking them out from is quite a unique one because once you're actually on it, uh, the horde cannot see you. So unfortunately, you will have to use one or two throwables. Now, first of all, I'm going to get to the position, basically just heading up here. If you want to be a bit more quiet, you can just walk. You don't have to take the bike. I'm just doing it for speed purposes. From here, just looking to make my way down onto this section of rock right here. And anywhere around here now is fine. I'm just getting down a little bit because it'll just give me a slightly better line of sight. Now, if you're not sure where to get your hands on some good throwables very early on, um, I do have a number of videos where I basically just go after one specific horde where I show a great number of ways of taking them out. But on these videos, I also show um, some very good locations in order to get your hands on some of these items. Um, worth checking out if you're not sure where to get your hands on some good items very early game. But anyways, for this, I've started off with a flashbang, which was probably overkill, but now I've thrown out a normal attractor and I'm just looking to get the numbers down heavily um, at this point. Yep, so far so good. They're still coming out. In fact, I think I've got them all coming out of the, the cave now. And I just basically want it to a, a point where I have less than 20 freakers. Because once I'm at that stage, and I'm pretty sure I've got them down to that now, I'm looking to use an attractor bomb, which will take out a maximum of 20 freakers. And this job should now be well and truly done. Yeah, that's it. Lava we'll Arch Horde done and dusted. Right, on to the Twin Craters Horde. This horde is from the Belknap region. It is 50 strong. And basically, I'm looking to take them out from the night water area. And a very unusual setup for this particular horde. Uh, basically involves getting to a particular area and then dropping down onto the actual area where I'm going to take the horde out from. Uh, and also worth noting, this isn't essential, but I do recommend it. Make sure you have an SMP9 to do the job here. Because uh, this isn't a particularly high... Um, area in terms of a high ground glitch but it does work uh, they simply cannot climb onto the area that I am on right now but they can get close enough that they can possibly get in one or two slaps if you have an SMP9 you shouldn't really have any issues because it takes them up very quickly and it is only a 50 strong one and I did take a slap I think to my right there from something but uh, as you can see it doesn't actually take very long to take out that horde. Job done. Right then, on to the Shadow Lake horde. This horde is from the Belknap region. It is 50 strong, and I'm looking to take them out from their night feeding location. And this horde does take a little bit of work because the, the setup for it uh, does take a little bit of time. Because of the area that they're actually in, and they spread out quite well over this section, um, this is the way I recommend you get them over to um, the kill location. So I'm looking to go right around the horde. I like to use the bike because it's just a bit safer. Obviously the bike is a lot quicker than uh, Deacon when he's running. And then basically when I get over to this area here, I want off the bike very quickly. I'm going to head over to this uh, building. Uh, just making sure I've got the numbers, but I also want to put a little bit more gunfire just to try and entice the last of the Freakers that are over there. From here, I'm looking to just release a normal attractor. It's just purely to uh, divert attention. And from here, I'm looking to get to the position that I need to be in. And it's down this rock area here. Once you get to this spot here, it's all good. The horde can't touch it. They don't even have the numbers where they can trouble you with the World War Z style tactics. Um, plus the slope uh, that is here makes this fantastic. Um, it's a nice easy kill area and uh, yeah, the only thing that I will say about this particular method is that 9 times out of 10 you have to leave this area in order to get the last of the Freakers. There isn't usually many but it's very rarely you will get all 50 of them 
come into that position because they are so well spaced out. So just going to get back on the bike and just try and pick off the last of the freakers that are about. I'm not sure how many I will have left because it is night time so there could be uh, quite a number of them about. And there we go. <laughs> Job done. Right then, on to the largest horde in the Belknap region, and it is the Pat Jens Lake Horde. This horde is 100 strong, and I'm looking to take them out from very close to their night water location. And I say close to because you do have to entice them over to the kill area. But it's uh, it's quite an easy job, given where they are. Um, basically just looking to do a little bit of a drive-by here. I will take out one or two of them. There's no point in not doing this. Uh, just want to make sure that I definitely have the full horde's attention and I most certainly do so from here I'm looking to head over to this area right here now if you just follow the line that I take here to get up this rock you'll get up there no problem and from here this is a two-parter because I'm looking to get to the highest section of this rock area for a very good reason because once you're here you don't actually know exactly where you are so even those odd um, Freakers that managed to get up onto the rock area with the World War Z style tactics. They haven't come any further because they don't know where to look for you. But they will in a minute. Once the numbers are down a bit, I like to come down to this section here and all of a sudden, now they can see me. <laughs> but from here, I've already made sure that the numbers now are very small indeed. And also, now that uh, the horde can see me, Virtually all the stragglers um, that were uh, not coming over are now coming over. You may find that there's one or two um, still out there, but you should be able to pick them off yet. Yeah, there's one over there, and I'm pretty sure that will be the last, and it is. Job done. Right, on to the Marion Fork Sword. This horde is from the Belknap region. It is 50 strong, and I'm looking to take them out from their daytime location. And worth knowing, this horde cannot be taken on at all until you have reached the Lost Lake region. So until you get there, folks, just simply don't bother looking for them because you won't find them. Now, the method to take out this horde is an exceptionally easy one. Just make sure to come off the bike first, head over to this position. It's at the very top. There is a hole in the roof of this cave. And this is beautiful. All you need to do is to get the horde's attention once you do, they will start to try and climb to your position, but you are completely safe because they simply cannot climb high enough. And from here, all you have to do is take out the horde. Now, worth noting with this horde, and it is starting to become quite apparent here, uh, you do tend to find that one or two of them in here will end up getting stuck. And it usually does, yep, that it's those ones there that I'm referring to. So normally it requires you to go into the cave just to finish the job off. But the numbers are so few, it's not a problem, it's not an issue. And there's normally one that gets stuck at the very top, and yep, he's actually come down. But there we go, job done. Right then, on to the Belknap Crater Horde. This horde is 50 strong, it resides in the Belknap region, and I'm looking to take them out from their night water location. And this horde is only available to take on once you have actually reached the Lost Lake region. Now, the simplicity of taking out this horde is beyond belief. It all centers around this rock on my left. Now, I'm using the bike to get onto this position, but you don't even require the bike. Deacon can actually run up to this position. Um, so it's rather bizarre that the horde simply does not get to your position. They just stop right below you and uh, for me here this is going to be a very quick horde kill indeed. Yeah. 
There we go. As easy as that, folks. Right on to the Bear Creek Hot Springs Horde. Now, this horde resides in the Belknap region. This horde is 50 strong. And I'm looking to take them out from their night feeding area. And very lucky to actually have um, an easy kill location for this horde because um, high ground glitch areas in the Belknap region are actually quite hard to come by. But this is the perfect one for this particular horde. It's right up here. In fact, pretty much anywhere along that ledge area once you're onto this position. But the one thing that you do require is a normal attractor. Or even an attractor bomb, but a normal attractor is better because it works for longer. An attractor bomb goes for so many seconds attracting them and then obviously just explodes. So um, I'm looking to take out one or two of them as they're basically heading over to uh, the attractor. But from here, yeah, now they know exactly where I am. And they're going to head over and they're going to die. Um, again, the slope here works hugely to your advantage, so you don't even have to worry about them uh, trying the World War Z uh, style tactics that I always go on about. They basically can't reach you. And there we go. Job done. Right, the Berlin Lake Horde. This horde is located in the Lost Lake region. It is 75 strong. And I'm looking to take them out from their night feeding area. And worth knowing that you can actually take them out from their night water location as well because it is very nearby. If they're at the night feeding area, all the better. It becomes a far simpler affair. But all you have to do if they are at the night water location is basically get their attention, get them over to this rock area right here. And it is fantastically easy to get onto. Um, it really is. Uh, you don't have to worry about uh, a, a correct bike line in any way, shape or form. It's just sloping so well for you. And then all I'm doing here now is just trying to get the horde's attention. And then this job from here will be a very quick one. Right then, on to the Wapanisha Road Horde, and this one is a special one. <laughs> Especially when you see the method in which I used to take them out. They are from the Lost Lake region, they are 75 strong, and I'm looking to take them out from their daytime location. But, I'm looking to take them out from inside their own cave, because there is an outrageous area where they simply cannot reach. And this is how you do it. Head into this area here, make sure to drop down there first, then crouch, and then move slowly. That way you will take a little bit of damage, but not much. And from here, I just want to get the horde's attention, so a little bit of gunfire will do the job, because all I'm looking to do is to actually move the horde. I would normally use a smoke bomb, but doing it this way, you don't even need to bother with a smoke bomb. Basically looking to get that area clear, two climbs, and then believe it or not, I am untouchable here. They simply cannot get onto the top section. I don't know why. It's very unique because there are other caves um, where the horde most certainly can get around the cave, no problem. But on this one, you know, it's uh, rather bizarre, but makes for a fantastically uh, easy kill location. And uh, yeah, this most definitely qualifies as uh, a high ground glitch for sure. Not only that, you can see there, I've got full control over this horde as well. I'm moving a little bit further forward so I know now the last of them are actually looking to start their climb and job done. Right, the West Fur Horde. Located in the Lost Lake region. They are 75 strong and I'm looking to take them out from their daytime location. Now, from here, I'm basically just looking to head around the side of the cave. I actually want to get to the top section. And from here, the largest rock taking that very specific line. 
I'm looking to get onto this rock area. And once I get here, that's it. This horde's in trouble. <laughs> What I love about this uh, kill area is you get a fantastic line of sight as they're heading over to you. They really do line up so well, so I actually try and take most of them out on their way to my location that they're trying to get to. Uh, they usually come in two waves from that cave, uh, it's worth knowing. They are not, they're not the quickest at getting out straight away, but uh, they do come out eventually. <laughs> So now I'm starting to kill them here, because um, they are nicely bunched. Um, I'm taking another look here, yep, all of a sudden here comes the rest of the horde. Are there any more? Yep, they're still coming, so... At this point in time, I'm not bothered in any way, shape or form about the ones that are beside me, because I know I am untouchable at this spot. Uh, I'm basically looking to clear up the last of the ones down below, and now this lot here gets my full attention, and this won't take long. And there we go. Westford Horde, done. Right then, on to the largest horde in the Lost Lake region, and this is the Matolia Slava Cave Horde. 150 strong, and I'm looking to take them out from either the Night Feeding Area, which is where they are right now, or the Night Water location. Uh, both of them are very close by to the kill area that I'm looking to take them to. And worth noting that this horde is not available to take on until you've completed a mission in Days Gone involving Iron Mike. But anyways, on to the method. Um, I'm taking them from the night feeding area, so this is uh, the easier way of doing it. I'm just looking to get their attention. And this is a problem if you try and do it from the night water location, because that's their one night water location right now that I'm passing. And I'm basically looking to get to the top of this rock section, and... If you're doing it this way, just make sure that you have a couple of fast firing weapons. I've got the SMP9 and I think it's the MSW as well that I've got, so between those two, this will do the job nicely. It's only the first few seconds really when they get there in the really big numbers that you have to worry and just make sure that you're uh, concentrating on the top section of the speakers. After that, now it becomes uh, much easier and better to And there we go. Job done. Right then, on to the River Flow Farms Horde. This horde is from the Lost Lake region. It is 75 strong, and I'm looking to take them out during the daytime. And worth noting with this horde, folks, this is one of two hordes that basically is not available to take on until you've completed a Nero mission, which involves you taking Boozer out with you for the mission. Until you've got that mission completed, you will never see this horde, but on to the action. Make sure you take that line in order to get up onto the rock area. From here, I'm actually looking to get down to this rock, then basically step down onto that one. And from here now, I have a fantastic line of sight, but not only that, if any of the horde get too close, they're actually going to fall off the edge of the rock face here. So at this point now, it's a very... Um, easy one. It is mainly just about uh, crowd control as they start to come towards you in numbers, so just getting off a few shots, trying to get their attention. I'm starting with this weapon first because it is slightly slower firing than the SMP9. But rest assured, when I see the numbers coming, and here they come, now I'm changing to the SMP9. Much quicker firing, and it is fast as hell at reloading as well. And as you can see, just the first few seconds, you just have to be a bit wary but uh, look at this, the job now is uh, a much easier affair indeed. And even the direction they're coming up from now, as they're climbing up, makes it very easy to take out the last ones. And this won't take long now. And there we go. Job done. On to the Sherman's Camp Horde. This horde is from the Lost Lake region. It is 75 strong and I'm looking to take them out from a daytime location. And as well as this, like the Riverflow Farms Horde, this horde is not available to take on until you've completed a Nero mission that involves you taking Boozer with you. Until you've got that mission completed, you will never see this horde. But this is where I'm going for this one. 
Most people will recognise this location from a, a mission that you have to complete in Days Gone. But yep, believe it or not, once you're up to this location, you are untouchable. So from here, it's just a case of getting the horse attention. Once they get over here, I may even use one or two throwables. Yeah, if you know what, let's just get an attractor into the equation here. And yeah, I will go with a frag grenade because these are available to use at this point in time in the game. But grenades you can use right from the very start. It's basically just your uh, napalm molotovs. You wouldn't have access to them yet. You do not get access to them until you get to the south. But that's it, I've got the numbers down now, so I'm just going to take my time and uh, get the rest of them taken care of. Yep, and on this occasion, I can see I've only got two of them left, so screw it. I'm coming off this position, just makes it a whole lot easier. And there we go. Sherman's camp ward, job done. Right, on to the Mount Bailey horde. Now this horde is from the Crater Lake region. They are an incredible 300 strong and they are available to take on as soon as you reach the south. And I'm looking to take them out from their daytime location. Um, I always prefer to have a daytime location to take any horde out from because you have less surprises in the way of other freakers and things going about. But this is how it's done. Look to get to this end here and believe it or not, yep, this rock section is climbable. <laughs> A thank you to Simon Lee for this one because this is one I simply wasn't aware of until uh, this gent let me know about this one. And it's a fantastic one once you know about it. I just want to make sure the rest of the Days Gone community knows about this one too. Basically, get to this area right here and let the carnage commence. But you do have to get them out of the cave before you can actually get the, the job going. And this does take a little bit of time. A little bit of gunfire, just to entice them. The beauty of this area is that you are quite close to the cave, so once they start coming out, you get all the numbers. So I'm just taking the time now to basically concentrate on the ones that might be threatening to get to this position. And in all fairness, you, it's very rarely you'll get one that gets anywhere near because this is quite a high um, location that I'm at. But just because of the numbers, you just have to be that bit aware. Now, if you take on this horde later on in the, in the game, because you do have the option, this horde is available to take on as soon as you reach the south. If you do decide to take them on later on, you will have the luxury of being able to use Napalm Molotovs, but I'm going from uh, <laughs> a view that most people, when they get to the south, want to get 300 free careers very quickly, so for this particular demonstration, I'm just taking them out completely with gunplay. And there we go, the Mount Bailey Horde, done. Right, on to the Rimview Ranch Horde. Now this horde is 150 strong, they reside in the Crater Lake region, and I'm looking to take them out from their night water location. Now, the setup for this one is critical, because the line that you have to take up this particular rock is very important. You've got to start it going up the left side. You try it in the middle or to the right, you're going to struggle. You'll probably come off the bike. But once you're at this position, oh, <laughs> It's a very nice location indeed to take out this horde from. Now, it's also worth noting, this horde is a very unique horde in the Days Gone game because the daytime location is actually hidden behind an infestation zone. Basically, once you take a Molotov to, uh, or anything firewise to the uh, daytime location, it reveals the cave that they actually um, reside in and you will get a nasty shock if you try to take them on during the day. Um, I'm not 100% sure whether you actually have to take care of that infestation zone before they will start appearing at night like this. I would assume you probably would because otherwise they're basically um, blocked inside that cave. But um, if anybody knows about that one, possibly let me know because that's one part I genuinely am not sure about. But 
once you have the horde available to take on, <laughs> and when you get to uh, the south, they are pretty much fair game. Yeah, it's all good. Just remember, take care of the infestation zone nearby first. Right then, on to the Groose Gardens Horde. This is the first of three hordes that is available pretty much as soon as you get to the Highway 97 region. They're 125 strong, and I'm looking to take them out from their daytime location. Now this is a very tried and tested method. Most people know about this, but if you don't, this is how it's done. Basically, I am looking to get onto the roof of that building right in front of me. And that just involves climbing onto that area there, lining up properly so I can get across this fence section, and then just climb up onto the roof on the other side. Don't get it quite right the first time, but I do it a bit quicker this time, and that way, no problem. Don't worry if it takes a few goes, because the horde very rarely gets alerted as long as you're quiet, so... If there's no gunplay, you don't have a problem. But now, I can pretty much do what I please. Now, because this horde is one of the first ones that you will have the chance of taking out, obviously I will not be using Napalm Molotovs on this lot, because I wouldn't have them available to me at this time. If I left this horde until later on in the game, then yes I would, but uh, right now I'm just going to take them out with gunplay. And, uh, this won't take too long. Right then, on to the granddaddy of them all. It is the infamous Lobert Drawridge Horde that resides in the Highway 97 region. It's the largest of the hordes there, it is 300 strong, and I'm looking to take them out from their daytime location. And truth be told folks, I really was spilt for choice when it came to high ground glitches for this particular horde. I will show a video later on in the year that shows them all, but for now I'm just going to show one of the absolute best. And the beauty of this one is the ease in which it is to set up. The second part that makes this one so good is the control you actually have over the horde because when you're at the top of that rock section there the horde do not know where you are but when you come down a touch to where I am now yep they can see you so they will start to gather very nicely albeit in very very large numbers because they come out quick so I am going to take the time to use some Molotovs on this lot because they are 300 strong but watch this I go to this top area now all of a sudden the horde are starting to leave so that just gives me a little bit of control over the horde so at that point I want another Napalm Molotov into play just to get the numbers down and now all of a sudden they are a lot more manageable. I will take out the vast majority of them from here now and um, out with gunplay. Probably will use a Napalm near the other end as well just to uh, tidy them up but uh, yeah this one now is uh, as easy as it gets. Okay, on to the Chimult Station Horde. Not to be confused with the Chimult Mission Horde, which is a lot larger and I will be showing later, but this horde is 125 strong, resides in the Highway 97 region, and I'm looking to take them out from their night water location. Now, this is probably one of the lowest high ground glitches there is, but this does work. <laughs> you do, however, need to have a fast firing weapon in order to do this successfully, or you will take a few slaps. Looking to get onto this area here, yeah, and I don't even need the bike, but you have to get onto that area in that specific way. Once you do, get over to this section where I am at this rock here, and go to town. Because once they do reach, um, get very close to you beside this rock, yep, 
then you do have a possibility of taking a few slaps unless you're on point with your firing. Uh, hence why I make sure, yeah, you can see there, I wasn't far away from taking uh, hits. And yep, one of them's actually managed to make it up there, but I'm just holding my ground here. And that's it, I've got the job done. That's how you do it. Okay, on to the Chumult Community College Horde. This horde is again 125 strong. They reside in the Highway 97 region, and this horde I'm going to take out during the day. And it's worth noting that this horde is not available to take on until you've completed a very big mission indeed involving the community college. Once that mission is completed, you will be able to take on this horde. And this is how I'm going to do it. Basically looking to do a little bit of a drive-by here. If I take out one or two of them, that's fine. But really, the, the whole point of this is just to create a lot of noise. And by driving by in that way, you're getting the entire horde's attention. Which is very important, because where I'm about to take them, this will not take long to get the job done at all. I'm just stopping here just to make sure. Yeah, I can see. I've got the numbers. So from here, I'm looking to head round this way with the bike. And it is important you require the bike to do this. And it's this area right here. Just make sure you're lined up properly there. And then get up onto that section. Now from here, I'm looking to get to the other side of this rock area. Because once I get to this spot, look at the control I've got. You can see I'm bringing them over to this section here. And I'm not going to mess about here. Napalm Molotovs. Um, I do have the option of using them now. Because it basically just depends on what time in your mission that you... Uh, your Days Gone game playthrough that you decide to take them out. If you leave all these until near the very end, yeah, you can you can take out all of them in the Highway 97 region with Napalm Molotovs, so some of these hordes I certainly will um, use them, that's for sure. There's no point in having them if you're not going to use them. And uh, as you can see now, this is just about a done deal. Nice area to take them out, and you're completely safe at that uh, area as well. Okay, on to the Chumult Mission Horde. This is a biggie. You have no option but to take on this horde. Uh, you cannot possibly complete the game without taking out this horde. Now, the 300 strong, this does take place in Chumult itself, uh, obviously in the Highway 97 region. And this is the first mission that you have to take on in the Days Gone game that requires you to take out a horde. So, I'm looking to take advantage of all the items that are available there, especially the Napalm Molotovs. This is the first time you're introduced to them. And this is the way I'm going to take them out, and this is a very nice method indeed. Doesn't get much easier. The hardest part about this is actually just making sure that Deacon is correctly aligned when you're trying to climb up the area that I'm going to. So I'm not even hanging about and waiting for the horde to head over to where they eventually do. They are en route to across the road there. I'm just not waiting. I will be able to get all their numbers over to the area that I am about to go on to. And it's basically on the top of that uh, kiosk there. This is what I was saying. Make sure that you're straight when going onto that area. with, uh, And basically when you hit the jump buttons, and just the jump buttons every time, nothing else, you will get up there no problem at all. And from here, that is it, you're pretty much untouchable. If you're very, very unlucky, you may find that one or two of the Freakers might be able to get up to your position, but uh, at this point in the game, you normally have pretty damn good weapons, and as you can see here, I've got a Chicago chopper. You're not gonna belong with any of the Freakers that actually managed to get on top of uh, this kiosk. Also worth noting, um, you can take the time, if you want to do it uh, in a way that takes a little bit longer, you can actually wait until the horde is over the other side of the road and out of the way, and then take the time to fill up this kiosk with explosives. And then you can take out a good large number of them when they come over. But uh, for this demonstration, I'm just going to take them all out uh, with gunplay. And obviously the, the odd... Uh, Nepal Molotov, because uh, <laughs> you're first introduced to them here, you might as well use them. Yeah, and for the last of the Freakers, especially when it gets to these sort of numbers, make sure that you're over this side of the kiosk, because that way, basically, there's always some of them that are going to be out, so 
if you're not using napalm molotovs you can just take them out with gunplay eventually i will come off this area because when the uh, numbers are that low it's just easier to uh, yeah it's an awful lot easier to just take them out from the ground but to get the large numbers out of the way this is as good a way as you will get to do it again there are actually a number of um, high ground glitches for this particular horde but I'm simply choosing to show this one because it is the easiest by far and I've just got two more and this job is just about done you're not going to tell me Curry, please please just tell me that's all of them I can't believe it you did it you wiped out an entire horde yeah no problem no problem Right then, on to the McLeod Ridge Horde. This horde is 150 strong. It resides in the Crater Lake region, and I'm looking to take this horde out during the daytime. Now, very important to know that this horde is not available to take on until you've completed the Chumult Mission Horde, which is why I'm showing this one just after the Chumult Mission Horde. <laughs> but anyways, here we go. This is how it's done for this one. I'm basically looking to lure this horde over to this area and I'm looking to get up onto this rock area uh, ideally following that line you really want to just uh, prioritize slightly to the right hand side of uh, the rock and uh, basically just follow my line and you'll get up there fine and uh, basically once you're up here it's all good you do have the problem with this horde because they are 150 strong that they can try and get to your position with the World War Z style tactics but um, if you keep them under control with uh, a bit of gunplay and of course Napalm Molotovs because I can most certainly use them with this horde uh, then it's all good and now this is quite simply just uh, a clean up job this won't take long from here Okay, I've started this horde action here so I don't give away any spoilers for this particular mission, but this is the last part of it. This horde is coming and in two um, waves. Basically, I'm looking for the high ground advantage straight away here because they are coming from the bottom area. And make sure when you're doing it this way that you have two attractors and at least one grenade. If you have a second to use, fine. But this method works so well because the high ground advantage is getting used straight away. And when you do it like this, the first wave actually don't all reach you at the same time. In fact, some of them get stuck every time at the, the stairs section. And this is fantastic because it just allows you to take out the majority of uh, this first wave nice and easily. The high ground advantage that you have here is huge. Now, I am going to have to come down here to take care of the last of these ones. And unfortunately, this is where you lose your high ground advantage because the second wave is actually going to be coming from that top area. But that's not a problem. That is what the second attractor is for. Because when they get down to the level that I am at now, I'm just going to throw out an attractor, just wait until they're bunched, and then use a grenade. I'm not even bothered if I don't manage to take out all of... Uh, this wave with a grenade because I've got the Chicago chopper at the ready um, it's a fairly easy affair to take out the last ones what's it whatever is left and there shouldn't be many yeah some of them that were just a little bit slow in getting down to the attractor but there we go that is that horde done right then on to a very important mission horde indeed this is the just doing my job mission horde now as you can see here there is a horde right above me 
So I'm not going to release that guy that's in the chair yet. I basically want to go to a particular area in this cave section because I want to mark it basically with a remote bomb. By placing a remote bomb down, that will appear on the minimap. And it's this area right here because basically once the sword starts coming, you want to get to this area as soon as possible. And you don't want to be wasting time thinking, oh my god, which way do I have to go? If it's on the minimap, you have a damn good idea where it is. And another thing about this mission, by basically completing this mission, uh, you actually um, help unlock uh, a horde from the Highway 97 region. It's basically the Beaver Marsh rest stop horde. If you do not complete this mission, you will never see that horde. So um, this is one part you need to get done in order to do this. Um, now, another thing of uh, to watch for here. Very... Very interesting to see. Oh. I never actually noticed it until now, but while Thanks, that guy's man. talking away here, Deacon is constantly looking up I'm at the in. ceiling. I'll this is a very good job by Bench Studio that are, if they're basically yeah, saying, if you if you hadn't noticed the horde, notice what Deacon's looking up at. They do make it clear that something is up there. But now, here they come. <laughs> That's it. I'm off. So. I'm looking ahead along this way, and it's generally over to the left area here. And there we go. That uh, remote bomb just makes it so much easier to find this section. Now, this isn't where the high ground glitch part comes into it. Um, this is just the first part of it. I've now got the horde over here. Yeah, I'll take out a few of them with uh, the Chicago Chopper, because they are nicely bunched. But I am going to take them down to another spot. This is where I say a high ground glitch. I mean, it's been designed that you can take out the horde this way, but if you're not aware of this way in order to take out this horde, then this mission becomes an awful lot harder. But by getting over to this area here, yep, the horde cannot reach you here. You are untouchable. And another reason why it is so good to do this mission this way is because of what is coming through the tunnel. Yep, there is a few marauders that are heading this way. Do you know what? I'm just going to give the horde a heads up to get over this way now. And here they come. Yep, when I get over here, I'm not worried about the fact that the marauders might survive. They are dead. So I'm going to take the time to try and take out as many freakers now as possible. <laughs> At this point, if you like it, it's even worth using Molotovs, grenades, whatever. The only thing, and you'll see it in just a minute, because it is one thing that is a little bit annoying about this uh, area, is that if you're trying to drop things down onto the horde from here, it's exceptionally difficult to do. But they are nicely bunched there, so I'm, I am taking the time to uh, take out a great deal of the numbers with the uh, Chicago Chopper bottle. Watch this. Gotta try and get a Napalm Molotov out and it's yeah, it's difficult as bloody hell. You just you need to get that arc and unfortunately I'm not because uh, basically of the surroundings. So <laughs> the easier way of actually getting this done I say easier because you, you do still have the same problem every time. Yeah, you need to get that uh, arc in play. And then when they're starting to come out again, I've got the same problem. I'm Oh, I was getting it close there. Do you know what? I'm going to actually have to move here in order to get this done. I was going to edit this out, but I thought it's worth showing so that anybody else that's taken on this world this way will realise the problems that you're going to face. But uh, right now, I actually have most of the numbers taken care of for this particular world. So at this point, it really is just um, a tidy up job. In fact, with what's left now, it's pretty safe just to uh, hop on down and get the job done. There we go, finally. And that's how it's done. Right then, on to one of the biggies. This is the Iron Butte Horde. It is 300 strong. This is actually a mission horde, however, you can take this horde on sooner. 
if you basically unlock the Iron Butte region, all of a sudden you do have access to this horde. Um, I would recommend that you actually take it on at the very end when you're supposed to just follow the storyline, but obviously it's up to uh, the gamer. Now, on to the method. There aren't a great deal of um, high ground glitches for this horde at all, but this one is a beauty. And again, this one is uh, thanks to Simon Lee who provided me with the information for this particular uh, area because this isn't a rock area I would have uh, checked had I not known about it. But anyways, it basically involves getting the horde to follow you over to this area and trust me, the Iron Butte horde, never a problem getting them to follow you. <laughs> but this line here is important. This is the hardest part of this. The setup is, I wouldn't say insanely difficult, but it's not easy. You want to get the bike to that area and make sure you can get off at the very top. Once you are, you can just go to town. And obviously at this stage in the game, yeah. <laughs> Molotov cocktails are, uh, the napalm Molotovs I should say, can be used and I'm most certainly going to use them. It's a 300 strong horde so I'm, I'm looking to take them out quite quickly. And uh, the napalm Molotovs do a very good job in that department, especially if the horde is tightly bunched like what they are now. You will basically get around 50 to 70 kills. So another couple of those, that should really thin them out nicely. And with this particular method, you are so high up that you really don't have much to worry about at all in the way of any of the freakers getting anywhere near you. Uh, this really is one of the highest um, <laughs> high ground glitch areas that you will uh, see in this game. Uh, there is one that does actually get you a bit higher but I'm not showing it on this video. Um, it's another area from uh, the, the Lobot Drawer Horde. <laughs> but at this point, just basically a case of getting the job done with this lot. There's not that many of them left now. Anything basically now that's moving, just looking to pick off. Sometimes you will have to move a wee touch along these rocks because there is times like, look at that freaker there, I'm just doing everything I can and that one and I'm not actually hitting them so yep at this point I'm just going to move down to here. I still have a bit of protection and the freakers are coming to me and there we go. Job done. Okay, on to the granddaddy of them all. This is the big one, the Sawmill Horde. There is no larger horde in the entire game than this one. It is 500 strong. Uh, they are located in the Lost Lake region. In fact, very close to the Lost Lake camp. And I'm going to take them out during the daytime. And as for easy kill locations for this particular horde, especially high ground glitch areas, there are a great number. I'm choosing to use this one because this is one I discovered um, fairly recently and it's a fantastically easy one to be able to do. As well as that, it's also a whole lot of fun. Uh, the first part is a very simple one, I just want to get the horde's attention. And from here, I'm looking to head up this hill and then when I get to the top here, just want to do a nice turn and then that part of this rock area here Yep, the bike's heading up there, and you get up there no problem at all. From here, once I'm up, I'm looking to get uh, the special weapon out, and in this case it's an RPD. Most people at this point will probably have an MG55, but uh, this bad boy does a good job also. And from here, I'm looking to get to this point because you get a fantastic uh, line of sight with the freakers that are coming up, so I'm just going to hit them hard as they're uh, heading up the hill. And when their numbers eventually die, yep, then I'm going to go to town on them right here. Don't have to worry about them getting to this position because I am way too high up. Um, but I am going to take the time to smash them with a couple of napalm molotovs. Okay, so far so good. This at the moment though is roughly half of the horde. Now, there is a way of going about getting the whole lot of them here. And this is how you do it. 
Uh, I'm leaving that section. I'm looking to come over here and then very slowly edge my way down this rock face. You will know when you get to the right area um, where they can see you because they will come running over to you. And there we go, we have movement. <laughs> So at this point, I'm looking to take out uh, what's left down there. Uh, just gunplay at this point because uh, there's not enough of them to warrant using a napalm uh, molotov. But, I've got the survival vision on. I can see right now more are coming. And this is the rest of the horde. Yeah, now you can see they're coming in numbers. Again, got a very good line of sight here, so I'm going to take advantage of that. Now at this point, I am a lot lower down than what I was in the previous uh, part of uh, this run. So, <laughs> I am going to be uh, making a point of trying to get uh, the numbers down quite quickly here. So far so good with the idea, but... And this has gone very well right now. But I am going to use another uh, Napalm Molotov on uh, this lot, especially when they're congregated like that. Yep, I'm actually surprised there are still as many as that, so what the heck, they're going to get another. <laughs> I do love it when you see the acrobatic uh, efforts from the Freakers as uh, they're, uh, they're being killed near the end. Always amusing to watch. But this job is just about done. That should be the last two. And there we go. That is the Solmel Horde taken care of. Right then, on to the first of nine endgame hordes. And this is the Beaver Marsh Rest Stop Port. It is 125 strong. It resides in the Highway 97 region, and I'm going to take them out basically at their daytime location. And as well as this, folks, it's well worth knowing that this horde is very unique because it is actually doubly locked. Not only do you have to take this uh, horde on after you've completed the main Days Gone game, but you also must have uh, basically completed the mission called Just Doing My Job, which also consists of a very large horde. Much larger than this one, but this is how I'm going to take out this horde. I'm actually going to show potentially another way that you can take out this horde because this barrier here, the horde just struggle to get over. As you can see here, I'm getting no problems whatsoever. But the idea of what I'm doing here is simply to move the horde because the area, when I show you how I'm going to take out this horde, you probably won't believe. And it all centers around the house that they normally go into. This one right here. I'm going to head over there and then use this section here to get onto the roof and then just get about there. And believe it or not folks, that is it. I am untouchable here. They can't get to me. So from here, it is just a very nice, easy job in uh, which to clear out this hole. But again, I can't stress this enough. This is a doubly locked horde. You must have completed the main Days Gone game and you must have completed the mission called Just Doing My Job. It's a Marauder uh, mission. If you don't have both of those in place, you will never see this horde. However, this shouldn't take too long from here, folks. It's uh, quite literally a case of getting the last of uh, the Freakers. Right then, on to the Juniper Ridge Horde. This horde is 125 strong. It resides in the Highway 97 region, and I'm looking to take out this horde at their daytime location. And this is another one of the hordes that I refer to as an end game horde. It will not appear until you've completed the main Days Gone game. 
Now, here is the method. I'm looking to get over here, so I'm trying to be quite quiet with the bike. And you do have to watch the line here. Actually, the, the line in the rock actually shows you the way. And basically what I'm looking to do from here is to get off. And I ideally want to be in that top corner. So I might just have to do a little bit of uh, moving around with the bike to get this done. Yep, about there, that may do the job. I'm looking to get to the other side of the bike. And there we go. From there, this is uh, one of the safest parts of this rock that you can get. To the right of me, it's a little bit lower down and you are more at risk of being caught by one or two of the freakers in terms of getting slapped. And the trouble is here, if you do take a slap, you're likely to go straight down into the horde. So uh, you don't really have anywhere to go. If you take a hit, you're heading down. But because I am at this spot, it's just high enough that really you can get the job done nicely and uh, just for uh, safety sake I'm using a new Marathon because they are congregated so nicely below me and now the horde is very magical indeed in fact from here this shouldn't take too long to and there we go Juniper Ridge Horde done okay on to the Solomon Hill Horde Again, this is an endgame horde, so you cannot take this on until you've completed the main Days Gone game. This horde is 125 strong, located in the Highway 97 region, and I'm looking to take them out at their daytime location. And this particular spot is fantastic. Not only is it nice and easy to get to the area that you need to get to, but once you're here, you have an awful lot of control over the horde. Because there are sections of this rock where the horde simply struggles to see where you are. But more importantly, if you go up far enough, the horde struggles to get a hit on you. But you do have to be in one of the lower areas when you start this process here. Because you do want the horde basically right below you. And uh, yeah, that is where I'm looking to get them all congregating. Once I have them all there, then I will move a tad up this rock area. And at the moment, I think that's a problem. I'm not down far enough. So, let's see if this does it here. Yep, there you go. You just take... The horde let you know when they can actually see you. Because all of a sudden, they go from just sneaking out to all of a sudden, yeah, they come out in large numbers. Now that I've got them there, I'm moving a tad further up the rock face. And from here, now I'm going to let them have it. Just basically in that one area there, because that is the only area that they are likely to even remotely get anywhere near you. And at this point now, it's just a case of tidying them. And there we go. All done. Okay, on to the Rum Rai Gulch Horde. Now this horde is 125 strong, it resides in the Highway 97 region and I'm going to be taking this horde out at night where I'm basically looking to move them from their water location over to their feeding location. And of course this is an end game horde so basically until you have completed the main days gone game you will never see this horde. But this is where the action takes place. You ideally want them to be at their water location so that you can take the time to climb up this bad boy. And you want to be at that height. If you are any lower, you are at risk of being hit by the freakers. But basically, once you're in position, the job is a pretty easy one. Um, <laughs> apart from actually getting an attractor away because you've got to make sure that the arc doesn't actually hit the uh, side of the piling. So, now that the attractor's in place, um, the jobs are a pretty simple one. I'm just waiting for the, the horde to react. They will eventually come up the hill, and when they do, I'm just going to give them holy hell with gunplay. <laughs> and they will eventually see me, and they will eventually come over. And once they do, then it's just a case of taking care of them whatever way I see fit. So far, so good. I'm looking just to basically work on the ones that are heading towards me as you can see I have got quite a lot below me so I will take the time to use a napalm molotov just to reduce our numbers heavily 
And let's have a look, see if there are any more coming. Yep, this should be the last of the Horde heading over right now. So at this point, basically, once they all get over here, it's just a case of clearing them up. And from here, this shouldn't take that much longer. Right then, on to the Cascade Lakes Rail Line Horde. This horde is 125 strong. It resides in the Highway 97 region, and I'm looking to take out this horde during the daytime, so it will be very close to their day location that uh, I use this kill area. Now, it's worth knowing that this high ground glitch area can also be used to take out the Chimult Mission Horde, because it is very close to where they are. And not only that, if you have enough patience, you can actually get the Chimult Station Horde over to here as well. Um, just worth knowing. <laughs> now, basically, once I've got the bike onto this area, I'm looking to get onto this very rock here. And uh, to get the action going, I am going to require an attractor. And uh, another big tip, make sure that when you're throwing an attractor, that you do not throw it into water. Because if it hits water, it's useless. But at this point, yep, that's grand. The attractor's doing its job. I'm basically wanting them out in high numbers. Because eventually, once they uh, realise exactly where I am, they will come over here. And uh, this particular uh, high ground glitch is fantastic because uh, you have a fantastic line of sight as they're uh, basically heading towards this position. And you can take up most of the horde <laughs> from this... Uh, from this line of sight alone, um, as you can see, uh, makes killing them a very easy affair indeed. And the beauty of uh, this area, as with a few others, because the rock area is very close to um, a ledge, if they get too close to you, they're basically just going to fall over. They will run around and try and get back at you, but... Uh, Right now, I don't think there is too many of them left. Yeah, I think it's just that one. And there we go. Done and dusted. Right then, on to the Mount Scott Ski Resort Horde. This horde is 125 strong. They reside in the Highway 97 region. And I'm looking to take them out from either their night feeding area or their night water location. Basically, the two of them are very close to each other, so you never have a problem finding this horde. And the beauty of this location, when I uh, eventually get to the kill area, is this. You can potentially take out a second horde. If the Solomon Hill horde is at their water grounds, you will also get them joining the action, guaranteed, because they are very close by. But they are not always at their water location. So for this to work, I'm basically looking to head down here. I don't even have to worry about making a noise yet. Just looking to use the bike to get onto this ledge area here. And once I get off here, very important, head over to this rock. And I want to be right over to the far side of it. Yeah, round about there. Basically, when the horde is attracted to this area, it will start running up in numbers. And basically, it's, uh, it's another instance of when they get too close to me, they're actually going to fall over the cliff edge but at the same time you also have the added luxury of having a very nice line of fire indeed so let the action commence 
just taking the time to take out a few of the ones that are up top and now I'm going to focus my attention to the ones as they're falling over because it's a fantastic viewpoint as well. It really is one of the things where it's a, a rather bizarre sight. Now, let's see how we're doing. Oh, I'm getting numbers here. I have a very funny feeling that I have got Solomon Hill board in on the act here as well. This is a lot of numbers. Yeah. <laughs> Just about guaranteed. I have now got two wards basically here, and uh, this is just an added bonus if you do happen to get another horde. I have shown on one of my previous videos it is actually possible to get three hordes to this location and take them out very easily. Um, just given the fact that every time when any of the horde get near you, that's it, they're going over the edge. So it's uh, a fantastic uh, bit of safety uh, thrown into this. Uh, high ground glitch but uh, right now the numbers are starting to tease off in a big way so it's just taking care of the last of them and there we go that is the Mount Scott Ski Resort Horde but I am pretty sure I've got the Solomon Hill Horde here as well so I'm going to let this set uh, run on yep there is more freakers so and there you have it Two for the price of one. Okay, next up is the Sagebrush Point Horde. This horde is 125 strong. It resides in the Highway 97 region, and I'm looking to take this horde out during the daytime. And of course, this is another end game horde, so until you've completed the main Days Gone game, you will never see this horde. But here's how this is done, folks. I'm basically looking to avoid the cave entrance like the plague. Um, basically a quick run up this way and when I get to the top here you can see a wee gap over there but that's not where I'm going I'm just going a little bit higher up here and it's round about this area here there we go that is what I'm looking for from here I'm just looking at two nice easy drops down to this section and here we go at this point now I am untouchable now I've done this one in the past where the horde haven't actually recognized me but by moving just a bit closer to uh, their cave entrance, it does actually work. You do actually get their attention. So they are coming out. They're, they sort of know where you are. Yep, they are gathering. It, it's more to do with the gunfire at this point. But just keep watching. I'm going to try and move just a little bit more further forward. And there we go. Now they can see me. <laughs> and now. It is a very easy cleanup job, especially as uh, basically the the level of the land here really does do you a big favour. They can't get anywhere near you, and I'm just using the napalm for the hell of it here just to uh, clean them up just a little bit quicker. And this job shouldn't take too long. And there we go, job done. Right so on to the friendship bridge hold. This horde is 125 strong, it resides in the Highway 97 region and I'm looking to take them out from their daytime location. And of course this is an end game horde so they will not appear until you've completed the Days Gone game. Now this is the method. It's a tried and tested one, this uh, it works very well. I'm just looking to start off by doing a drive by here uh, just to get the entire horde's attention. And yep, I can see I've definitely got them. So from here, just looking to get the bike down to this section and over to my left. I'm looking to head over to this area and it's uh, one of these wood traps um, that I'm looking to get on top of and basically over to the top left. Um, very similar to um, a glitch that works very well also in the sawmill horn. But uh, right now it's uh, this lot I'm focusing on. So... It is a very easy job from here on in because you are untouchable and you can either just take them out as they're landing on the floor there or when they're actually climbing up on that section. And uh, yeah, this work will not take long at all from this point so it's just a clean up job.
And there we go. Job done. Right then, on to the last of the nine endgame hordes that reside in the Highway 97 region, and it is the Beasley Lake Horde. This horde is 125 strong, and I'm looking to take them out from their daytime location. So, here's how it's done. I basically want to, reasonably slowly, because I don't want to get their attention until I'm actually in position, I'm looking to climb up this rock. Just get to there, you can't really get much further. And then ideally I want to be on that side so that I can drop down onto that ledge right there. And that's it from here, it's all good. Just going to get their attention and then I'm just going to take them out as quickly as I can. Yep, now I've got the numbers so now I'm going to go hard with the dump plate. There that are, uh, <laughs> are getting mighty close to getting to my position, but as always, as long as you're on point with uh, the firing, it's all good. And I'm just going to take time now to really take down the numbers quickly. You have the napalm molotovs, you might as well use them. I was actually hoping that uh, napalm molotov would take out the entire horde, but <laughs> there's always one. But never mind. Job done. Right then, as a bonus, I am actually going to show the last two very unofficial hordes that reside very close to ambush camps. And this one is the Spruce Lake Ambush Camp Horde. Now, it's roughly about 40 strong in numbers. And ideally, with both of these hordes, what you're really wanting to do, the smart play, is to actually use the horde, first of all, to take out the ambush camp before actually taking out the horde itself. And uh, this one does have a high ground glitch area also. Um, the last one, it's a high ground glitch of sorts. It's definitely high ground, but uh, you might argue whether you would call it a glitch or not, but uh, it's more like uh, just clever thinking. But uh, for this one, this is how you go about getting the job done. I'm looking to Ideally, any weapon as long as it's suppressed. I don't want the ambush camp to actually know of my whereabouts, so I'm just looking to get over here, and it's that crate right over there. Okay, very nice. And at this point now, I'm just waiting for the horde to come out and do its thing. And here they come. Okay, I'm just going to let this play out for the next couple of minutes until the horde's actually done what they need to do. And then Let's I'll get back this. to the commentary. What do you think now, huh? Sh back. How do you like that? You son of a bitch, where are you going, huh? Right, at this point I decide to give the Horde a little bit of a helping hand because there is still two Marauders over there somewhere. And yep, I've just seen one of them moving about there, so there we go. Just uh, a little bit of extra noise just to get the Horde's attention. And that should hopefully take out the last two. Well, they've definitely got one of the two.
And at this point, I'm pretty convinced that the last Marauder is actually hiding because they've been all over that area and they don't seem to be taking out that last one. So I'm actually going to have to do this myself, which is uh, a little bit unusual. I have seen this happen once or twice in the past, but it very rarely it goes down like this. Normally, the Horde takes out this ambush camp very quickly and very cleanly. So let's see where this last Marauder is. I'm keeping that suppressor on because I don't want to alert the horde yet. And there is the bugger right over there. So no problem. There is a way to get into the camp from this side without blowing up the front main gate. Realistically, I could have just let him be and take out the horde first, but I like to be thorough, so. <laughs> there we go. That is the camp now taken care of, so there is a nice spot that you can take out this horde, no problem, where they basically can't get to you. And I'm just going to show you exactly where that is right now, so I'm just going to loop this lot around here first. Uh, yep, smoke bomb will actually suffice. Don't need to bother with an attractor. It's right here. Just want to get smoke bomb down there. Just gives me enough time to safely get onto this area. And that's it. Up here, I am untouchable. The horde cannot get up to this position. So now it is quite literally a case of cleaning up this camp. And uh, this will be another job well done. And that is it, that is the job done for this horde. And it's worth knowing that this one and the next one that I show are actually respawnable hordes. Throughout the course of the game, if you come back days later, they will reappear. <laughs> right then, the very last horde actually resides just below the Belknap Caves ambush camp. So, this is where it is in the Belknap region. And... The actual cave is right there. It's actually right below one of the bridgeways that is on the ambush camp. And that is basically where I am eventually going to take them out from. But first of all, might as well take the time to actually clear this camp first. And uh, as with the last horde, I'm going to use this horde also in order to take out this camp. The only thing I am going to do is... Yep, I was looking to take out these two quietly, but it hasn't quite gone that way, but that's okay. Because from here on in, I couldn't care about noise. I'm actually wanting more noise. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just making sure to watch for bear traps. I'm not bothered about the, the wires that are uh, basically uh, letting the camp know that I'm here. They already know I'm here. I just want that horde out now in numbers. This horde, by the way, is 30 strong. So, yep, here they come, and... I'm not even going to bother with those two Marauders. I always think the easiest way of going about this is just basically going in. Not so much guns blazing, but going in running like hell. Um, yeah, sort of running the gauntlet here. And I'm just looking to try to get to the other side of this camp. Now, you can blow open that section over there. Um, but I don't like to do that. It basically... it It's basically make sure that it's one way for anything that's coming over here and yet yeah, I have taken that freaker out but uh, I think it was coming over regardless but uh, the rest of them now I should be pretty safe so it's just basically going to let this play out obviously if any marauders start coming over that bridge they're going to get it but uh, I'll just let this play out until the horde has actually done its thing
Hide, you son of a bitch! It's clear. Now you know how it feels being on the other end of it. Yeah. Yeah. Bunker. Yeah, I bet they had a bunker. Just gotta find it. Okay, the horde have most certainly done their thing. I'm getting a tad concerned here. Um, truth be told, I don't want to be throwing this attractor, and I'm not sure it would do any good. <laughs> because those freakers were that close um, it would certainly do something to stop the rest of the horde that is over on the other side but the ones that are actually on the bridge yeah probably wouldn't do any good at all so I've got the gun at the ready but I think I'm going to be okay here yeah okay that's all good at this point I'm just basically going to move the video on to when they're actually heading into their cave down below And here we are. I'm now going to press my high ground advantage here in a big way. They have no idea where I am. I'm basically looking just to throw down one attractor and then I'm going to follow it up with a grenade. Now truth be told, you don't have to do it this way. This is just a bit safer. You can actually head down there and just fire a sneaky grenade into the cave and that will do the same job. But uh, here we go. This is always nice to see. Yep. That's a pretty damn nice way to finish off this video. And that is it, folks. That is every horde in the entire game. Obviously, all the official hordes have been taken out using high ground glitches. Some of the other ones, the mission hordes and whatnot, one or two of them, just high ground advantages. But that's it. Thank you so much for watching the video, and I hope you all enjoyed it.